Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. We are so excited to welcome Craig and Asante to the show, the men behind the White Tiger podcast. Thanks so much for being with us awesome. today. Thank you, Thank you for having us. So much. You shared with us a little bit at the top of the show what you're doing with White Tiger podcast, but why White Tiger? Uh, What's you know, the meaning behind the name? That's a really great question. Um, White Tiger was actually inspired by an entrepreneur uh, by the name of Darren Hardy. Uh, Darren told the story about the White Tiger that was taken from uh, India, brought here to the United States, put in a cage, a 12 by 12 cage, and just to put on for people to see, because no one's seen an animal like the White Tiger before, so much different than all the other tigers out there. But what happened was it became so popular that they expanded this cage and made it more of an exhibit. And uh, when they moved the tiger from that cage into this exhibit, they realized that the tiger never left that 12 by 12 footprint that it was in for such a long time. And I felt like that was really metaphorical of what we wanted to do with the podcast. It's just because we all have our cages, not wall cages per se, uh, but we all kind of put ourselves in these cages sometimes that we can't get out of. And I think what we try to do is try to give people some good content, good information to hopefully get them start thinking about getting out of, out of that own cage they have. Oh, I so love that. Yeah. I love that you explain that because I was like, white tiger is my spirit animal. But now the way you describe it, like, you guys are my spirit animal. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Yeah. We talk a lot about the subconscious and how it's running about, you know, 95 plus percent of our life and how we're just in that 12 foot square, yeah. whatever we've been in our past. Yeah. So tell us about some of the highlights. What have you come to? What conclusions have you come to? Well, you know what? I think a lot of times uh, with some of the people that we interview, we often really just enjoy the fact that they've had success and we want to be around them and find out about success. But the really, really interesting part about it is, is their journey. It's like that journey mm -hmm. of, of, of struggle, of challenge, of all those things is what's really interesting to us yeah. because there's so much information to really be learned there. Right. And I think we've, as kind of just hosting this, have taken so much away from that. And I think people have responded like, overwhelmingly with saying, you know, I loved what this guest said, or I really enjoyed what you guys said about this based on your experience. You know, Asante is an athlete. Me, I have a background in law enforcement, so we can kind of use our experiences and share them to, to really help people. And it's, it's been, it's been great. It's so fascinating. It's like, yeah. it's like our, we're trying to give up our story and yet our stories are greatest assets, you know, <laughs> like it's just a funny counterintuitive thing. Yeah. And right? you know what the interesting thing is? I always tell people, I'm like, listen, everyone has a story. It's just a lot of times, no, not many people hear that story. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I would always suggest to people go out and tell your story. You never know who it may impact. It doesn't have to impact thousands, right. hundreds of thousands of people, just impact one person. That's all it takes. So Asante, what's your story? What brought you into the White Tiger podcast? So I met Craig at a pretty interesting time. I was going through my transition of, uh, I thought I was going to try to play football again, but the doctors didn't clear me. So I was figuring out what I was going to do next. And then I realized that I was going to retire from football. And I first got to speak about my retirement on the White Tiger podcast as a guest. Mm -hmm. And I was really grateful for that. It was really therapeutic for me to be able to get it out there and then couldn't get rid of me since, so I've been coming <laughs> yeah. so I tried. About the experience yeah. and about Craig that you really felt called to contribute your time and your effort to that. Well, like you said, everyone has a story. I never really thought of my story as one that could help people, but a lot of people, we've gotten great feedback from people taking little bits of wisdom from other people's stories, so I was happy that my story could be beneficial to people. Yeah. One of the things we talked a little bit the first time you were on the show about that transition mm -hmm. from being a you know, former NFL player to the life you're leading now. And one of the things that I was most inspired about was the way in which you navigated that so gracefully. I think a lot of athletes get stuck <laughs> in that. So you can talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you see that. <laughs> <laughs> it's painful, huh? It was, it was interesting. There was a lot of just uncertainty, not really knowing if I was doing the right thing, but it's been great having Craig to talk to for me, uh, being able to get that story out there, but I've tried to navigate it as best I can. A lot of trial and error, thinking I was interested in one thing and then realizing, yeah, probably not. So <laughs> it's been a lot of error. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the identity around it is the same thing as that uh, little cage that we all have. Right. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So where yeah. would you say, how would you say people are breaking out of their cage? What's the biggest common denominator of your guests? Uh, you know, I think it's kind of forcing themselves to uh, accept change and that a change is good mm -hmm. and that getting into a different routine it just starts somewhere because you know you'll keep getting the same thing if you keep doing the same thing right so it's right. a matter of just changing what you're doing and we it, love it, that insanity yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. because it's comfortable right because it's comfortable <laughs> we don't necessarily love it uh, we're, yeah. we're trapped in it yes we, we are to it. so how have each of you personally broke through that 
Oh yeah, hundred percent. So uh, for me, I came from a very regimented uh, career in law enforcement. You were pretty much told what to do, when to do it, and how to do it for a very long time. And um, you know, you become that. You develop a comfort zone. You develop like that's how I kind of mm -hmm. found myself living my life. Is just like having people tell me what to do, as opposed to wanting for me to go out and do it on my own. And uh, until I actually started to, when I transitioned from that, I realized like, listen, I, in order for me to make the changes that I want to see, I need to get out of that mindset, even because that's all I was used to. And was it difficult, you know, coming from a space where people were telling you what to do mm -hmm. and you're not getting an opportunity to like exercise your decision-making skills? Mm -hmm. Was it hard for you to get clarity around what you wanted to do moving forward once you decided to leave the law enforcement behind? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was difficult because when you only know something, that's all you know. And then you're trying to figure out, okay, where's life taking me now? And, uh, you know, I really am a big proponent of believing that things do happen for a reason. Um, things happen that I just can't explain. I'm like, and that's kind of what happened with the podcast and me connecting with Asante and what we're doing here. But I think once we started talking and the podcast has been a good vehicle for that uh, to just kind of lead us on a path or lead me on a path to trying to figure out what that next stage is in life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Podcasts are big. You know, I think people are, they, they want to listen and it's, there's something about the voice. It's really, really powerful. How did you find that? Like, what was it, what's been, has it been challenging, like finding your voice in it? Because you're just interviewing people, but it, that's a skill in of itself. Yeah, so um, I was a detective for 15 years oh. and I interviewed oh, a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> so the big, big okay. difference though is here is that it's really refreshing to be able mm -hmm. to, uh, to interview people that really want right. to talk to you. But, <laughs> like, but isn't this Touché. fascinating, yeah. right? Because we have to always trust wherever we're at right. is, is developing us yes. exactly where we're going to be. Yeah. Who would know that being a detective, you'd be interviewing people, no, right? Not in this capacity, mm -hmm. absolutely not. And uh, it's amazing how things mm -hmm. happen. And uh, sometimes you just can't explain it, but you just, you just be you and you just do your thing. And it's just amazing how things work out. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. That's cool. <laughs> So where can folks find the podcast? Where can they find you guys? Uh, you can find the podcast on all the big pop podcast platforms, iTunes, Spotify. You can check that all out on our uh, Instagram, which is at the White Tiger Podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, and also on the website, which is thewhitetigerpodcast.com. Such awesome. a great concept. Thank you so much. Awesome. You guys. Thank you guys for having us. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.